The legion was marching through a grove when they heard the horns. They were completely surrounded and therefore the legate pulled every available man down the slopes and into the trees while his auxiliaries would hold off the men rushing down the hill. Cavalry dashed over to protect our general who was battling against a remarkable number of Galatians. But as they routed, these men were now able to support the auxiliaries at the hill. As our cavalry reached the rear of the enemy position, they charged downhill at absolute speed. The Celts had no chance. The legion might have survived the ambush, but this was just the initial part of the Celtic plan to throw out the Roman Republic. The 15th pushed into Pesinarius, but found themselves surrounded by another Galatian army which originally was supposed to go for Ephesus. Scared of a potential attack and not wanting to take any risks, he recruited as many mercenaries as possible and prepared for the worst. His foresight was better than Apollo himself as the Galatian forces attacked. Yet they survived the encounter once again Meaning Legio 15 just destroyed two Galatian armies in less than two months. With this they would claim Pesinarius as their reward. Near Antioch a much smaller army foolishly attacked as well, but got easily repelled. This left Tarsus vulnerable right for the taking but not just for the Romans, as the Armenians saw this as an opportunity as well. And again, against the odds, the Roman army came out on top, narrowly surviving. Twice actually, as the Galatian tried once again to retake the town, but failed. With their surprise attack spoiled, we pushed on and captured Ankara and Iconion. Down south, two legions were marching into Nebatea, capturing the walled settlement of Petra. With no time to waste, as they needed to get up north to assist against the emerging Parthian and Armenian forces, the legions took Hecra, with Chamutas soon to follow. Now all four legions in the south could double time it northwards, meaning they would have nine legions in that area. But before we hear about that, let's talk about the end of Egypt. Palmyra gave the Romans a good fight, but with no success as they were defeated leaving the last Egyptian stronghold on the island of Cyprus. They fell by the wrath of Neptune, meaning justice on Egypt was finally served. Fleet reporting. In terms of the war with Armenia, we need to go a tad back in time. 
Legio III, the former division commanded by Rufus, desired to deal with the significant force of Armenian cataphracts, who caused the earth to shake as they journeyed forward. Our more limited legion intercepted the army, but this engagement required significant tactics if the men were to defeat the spawn of Satan. Knowing the Armenians had superior cavalry, we decided to protect our flanks by making an extremely narrow wedge. This way our skirmishers were safe to fire at the enemy, and this was our plan of attack. Once we got close enough, the enemy stormed out of the tree line, straight into our formation. Most of their melee cavalry was on our right, so we deployed most of ours over there as well. Most of their cavalry dealt with, our remaining forces converged on their position, overwhelming their lines. Tired and greatly reduced in manpower, the troops were blessed with victory. Still, they did not wish to rest. They propelled forward into Asamosata, claiming it in the honor of Rome. The other legions, which had endured countless battles at Tarsus, had finally recovered a bit of what resembled strength, allowing them to attack and occupy Masaka. But not willing to lose this town, Yet another Armenian force, though much less powerful, but still dangerous, attacked the town. However, as they immediately discovered, their feeble efforts were heroically repelled. With this victory, every legion in Anatolia went on the offensive, tracking down the last fleeing forces. Recognizing they were beaten, the Armenian king surrendered, and as the Republic was at war with this many enemies, one less was deeply appreciated. Your ideas are clever and will gain approval from my lord. I guarantee it, my friend. This left Parthia as the next target. Luckily for us though, one of their armies was all alone in Armenian territory, which is now controlled by us. We attempted to pincer the army, but with little success as they retreated into the forest. Here the legions could have caught them,
but due to a few logistical errors, this did not happen. But starving and without the will to keep fighting, the entire army surrendered, without any form of resistance. This was of course unheard of till now, but anyone willing to surrender to Jupiter would receive mercy. Back in the Levant, two legions were pushing for Dura, conquering it with ease. Here we saw that most of the Parthian forces were gathering at Hatra, and the legate decided to make an unexpected attack on the elite Persian army while it still was possible. Despite this being a victory, many men were lost, hence this was seen as a foolish move. Feeling the wind at their back, the Roman legions travelled at swift speed into the Armenian heartland, where their last target was the gold mine of Armavir. On their way though, another Parthian force blocked the path forward, but before a fight could begin, a diplomat arrived officially surrendering the war, but still keeping their independence. You speak a foreign tongue, and yet you bargain as well as, well, I do. This is most welcome. This allowed the four legions to prepare a last big strike and capture the town without any further trouble. And not wanting to be part of the war anymore, the Chimerians submitted to Roman rule alongside Gitea, whose armies were crushed once again. I fear I betray my people by agreeing, but I have no army or words to oppose it. With the Great War over, the legions finally got the glory and praise they deserved. Anyone who didn't participate in the East stood ready to applause the returning heroes. The smiles on every man, woman and child were priceless. Success for the Roman Republic was beyond measure. No doubt the gods were watching from their thrones in the sky. Mars more than any other, as we spilled blood almost everywhere in the known world. Legions would stop at the steps of the Temple of Jupiter, where Fusus would shout one sentence, Roma Invicta.